How y'all doing? Tired? Is this extra is this extra credit work you're doing? Isn't there enough studying to do? Okay. Uh, and after that nice introduction, if it's okay, I'd like to brag a little bit. Can I brag about what I have going for myself? I'm very lucky to have four very good qualities. My first is that impressive to brag already? Okay. My first good quality is I'm a horrible reader. To this day, I can't read well. I can't spell very well. Uh, in second grade, I had Sister Sheila, and I had cheated in my alphabet test. And she found out I didn't know the alphabet, and I had six weeks to go in second grade. Then uh, I flunked second grade, and she had this thing called the blue paddle, and she just paddled the hell out of me for two years. Then I had to go in third grade. I had to go to this place on Crenshaw, because at the time, my parents thought I had bad memory. It was a memory you're taking notes? What's so interesting? What's this? <laughs> this is just a story. There's no notes. I mean, I had, okay, I couldn't read. And I went to memory school. That's, what's noteworthy about that? Uh, uh, then uh, I went to Dr. Paul in Hollywood, and there were eight kids in the class. Two were 18 years old. I'm eight, and I kept thinking, well, there's something wrong with this picture. Why am I in school with 18-year-olds? And you could visually tell that they had real learning issues. And I kept thinking, well, that must be kind of goofy. Why am I in that school? But I, uh, I heard if you have real severe learning prob- or problems out of the birth canal, uh, you can't look up. So I said to these guys in the backyard, I said, oh, look at that airplane. And they couldn't raise their head. And I thought, wow, this doesn't feel right for me. So then I went to Dr. Walton. My parents said every word I ever read cost them $50. <laughs> Dr. Walton, I'd have to look at these stupid little eye circles. I ex- dilate my eyes and do eye exercises because at the time they thought bad reading had ba- eye muscles. I'm still at this time not figuring out these stupid little letters. And I don't see, really in my defense, I was with my little boy here. He's a senior in high school. and. Uh, in second grade, he had this spelling word called S-E-W. Now, what does S-E-W spell? Does that make any sense whatsoever? <laughs> Why does S-E-W spell so? It's not fair. I just can't figure out the stupid code. It's so should be spelled S-O. Uh, then I found Dr. Herr, Dr. K. Wood, uh, graduated impressively from high school, 8th, from the bottom of my class of 1,200. And uh, I figured out how to get to, you know, I want to ask you a question. This is just an A or a B. I'm out of high school, and there's a group that kind of thought, didn't reject me, kind of wanted me. That was kind of cool. But this group, you all had to wear the same clothes, sleep outside, be with mosquitoes and leeches and bombs and bullets. That's decision A. That's called the armed forces. Or (laughs) decision B was go to college, drink beer, and flirt with women. What was a better choice? (laughs) Okay, so I figured out to go to junior college, and I went to the USC extension office. I do think it pays to wear a tie and get to know these people. So she said, okay, we'll let you in if you go to extension. I figured out how to get through USC with a solid C average. And you know, Ds do get degrees. I have a degree. But what do you know about SC that you guys don't have at this junior college? Oh, uh, what do you guys, what does SC have? Football. And what do you know about football players? They don't exactly raise the curve. <laughs> so I figured out how to get in their classes, and I could always get a C, and I majored in loopholes. Like, for an example, there was one night a week, there was uh, great plays. Uh, and it take care of your let- literature requirement. Well, literature, says 15 books. I'm not going to read 15 books in my lifetime. So uh, I graduated from SC. Are you impressed so far? <laughs> now, I know you're... Feel my hands. What do they feel like? The word soft. <laughs> do they feel soft? That's right. They are soft. Uh, now, uh, I don't have any mechanical ability. I don't know how to do the six shift. I had this business, Kinko's. I never really knew how to run the machines. 
When I say really, I don't know how to run the machines. So uh, it was a big, I don't know how to, I, I don't have a computer, I don't know how to fix things. I'm really, what are you writing down? <laughs> the same. Okay, so I don't know how to fix anything, okay? So uh, that's a pretty good quality. Now, my third very good quality is I'm extremely restless. I do not know how to sit down. And why was that an advantage at Kinko's? My job at Kinko's was going store to store to store, always looking for what people are doing right. Can't you make more money looking for ideas than you can hovering in your office worrying about the cost? My variable cost was 16 cents. I sold it for a dollar. Do you, where do you think I'm going to spend my time? Worrying about sales, right? An idea is worth a lot of money. For an example, we had a, uh, uh, one of the stores, they did these calendars. You ever seen one of our calendars? You take 12 little pictures and you put them in a calendar format. They go like this. Did you ever see one of our calendars on a wall? Your personal family, did they ever have a... You never saw a calendar with your family on it? <laughs> Wait a sec, let's try this again. Have you ever seen a calendar, custom calendar, ever? Like, oh. <laughs> well, we do a lot of business in calendars. And, uh, <laughs> but they cu- we charge $30, they cost us two bucks to make, and we did them in December. You think that's kind of a cool business? Was that idea worth a lot of money? How many hours a day can you all work in this room? Let's just... Can you work or go to school five hours a day? Put your hands up if you can. I need it. I'm not getting paid, so just put your hand, please. Okay, can you work eight hours a day? 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Seven days? Seven days a week, 365 days a year. That's a good question. You can work like you can work like this forever. You know what does that? You know what does? Your savings works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, doesn't it? And your ideas don't they work all night long? So wasn't my business, my savings account, and my ideas? So you can work a little harder than you can with your brawn. You can work with your ideas, and I was very lucky. I didn't have too many skills. I couldn't do things capably. I couldn't fill out a form, and I can't fix things. The world's not going to say, come welcome you, Paul, to the world of anything. I have just had to work with those two, what God gave me, and I was able to have an advantage. I think I was very lucky. And where my fourth good quality comes into play, does anybody know anybody that's Lebanese in this room? Do you know any Lebanese people that have a job? I never, I have, uh, in Southern California, we must have three, four hundred relatives, really. And I never knew a soul at my family's house that ever had a job. They always had their own business. So I was never raised with the idea, we're going to work for other people. It's just not part of the equation. I remember one other, you know, and you just always have business stuff around the house. I remember going by, by the Hollywood Ranch Market when I was a kid, and I was in the back seat of the car. My mom and dad were in the front saying, now, that market's open 24 hours a day. Isn't that smart? They're spreading their overhead 24 hours. It's just the whole, the way you're raised. It was always business parables. And the way my family approached education was, I believe, you go to school to learn. And I think at our families, my parents' house, you always had interesting conversations. They involved the world, current events. And they were always engaged in society. And you're going to think this is a very goofy story. My brother was studying at 9.30 at night once. And my dad walked in and said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm studying for a test. And my dad said, you'll never remember it, so what's the good of learning it? And the idea was you go to school to learn. You're going to use this stuff in real life. And there was always a conversation to relate what you learn in school to the real life. So whatever you think you're taking down on notes and forgetting, you know, when they said subchapter S in your business school, Did you have to take notes on that? Couldn't you remember I save a layer of taxes on that? When the guy said theory X, theory Y, and organizational behavior, do you think I'm going to use that? I'm going to have my own business one day. When the guy said LIFO and FIFO, I was saying, yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm going to be on LIFO. Let's save on taxes. Uh, (laughs) But I didn't have to take notes on this. It was just I knew what I was going to do for a living. So uh, 
the, what you're learning in the school, my business school, I mean, I learned and I really applied it. And the class I used the most in my entire life was microeconomics. And at the time, you think, what a goofy class, these curves and all this nonsense. But it really was the class I used the most because everything I did in my business was all marginal revenue, marginal cost. You know, it cost me 16 cents. I sold it for a dollar. So if I had a worker, and they used to think we were the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I can't tell you when you come from a family where you have workers how important your responsibility to them is. You have a lot. My dad, the only time I ever saw him come home with the problems when he had to fire somebody. I was just, you know, you, you have empathy for your workers. I guess So the workers at Kinko's, used to think we were the nicest human beings because we had free lunch on Fridays. Allegedly free lunch. Okay, it cost $2 to buy the lunch on Fridays, which was deductible. Wait, let's try this again. What's the most precious word I had in my parents' house? The business word I hear constantly. I just said it a second ago. It's deductible. Didn't my parents always say it's deductible? Isn't that a common thing? So if it cost me two bucks to buy the lunch, what does it cost to write the check so the workers can get $2? You know, they have all these little uh, governmental clubs that just want to take all the money from the workers. So it cost me $3 to write a check I could write to my workers for $2, did not it? Now, the income taxes, if I save $2, the income tax guy is saying, well, let's take 90 cents of that away. So it cost me a buck ten, or it cost the workers $3. I mean, was that kind of a good deal? So uh, uh, I figured it this way. If it cost me $100 to employ somebody, why not spend the five extra dollars and get that attitude out of them, right? Didn't it make sense? We had a daycare. We had a program where we would put money in tax deductible and would go out tax-free to our workers' children for college education. Isn't that kind of a cool deal? And what do I want? What's my motivation at Kinko's? I want long-term relationships with my workers. They didn't give two hoots or a damn about The customers didn't care about Kinko's. They cared about Joe Blow that always works there that does my job. So I wanted to keep people with us. We had a program to help with down payments of the home. Now, was I being altruistic or was I being shrewd? I would say the supposition I was probably being shrewd. I never felt I was going to work to be altruistic. It was always a conniving little cunning part of me saying, I think this might make more money, right? Does it make sense to spend the $5 extra? Now, if you know what I've already told you, I get extremely restless. What is my favorite job at Kinko's to do? I like leaving the store. I hated those stores. I didn't like being in them. I just didn't like them. So I was always leaving. Now, you have two choices when you leave your business. or with, You can treat workers this way. Go like this. Now, anybody who's ever had a job which I never really had. But does an employee always have the last laugh? You go like this to an, a worker, what do they do back? They hit you 10 times harder? Is that common sense? You've been mistreated? Ha, ha, ha. I control the cash going on the till. I can give bad customer service. I could contaminate other people with lies about the owners. And you think you're the boss? Baloney. The workers are the boss. If you're the good owner, you realize your workers are God. You're there to just do anything you can to make them happy. So does it make sense to go like this with a worker or like this? <laughs> do you get the idea, happy fingers will ring happy registers? So I got that one really quickly. Uh, it wasn't really hard where I was very, once again, very lucky with my skill sets in life. 